Hello, my name is Bruce Easterwood, and today I would like to discuss support vector machine learning and demand forecasting. But first, what is machine learning? According to Tech Target, machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that provides computers with the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. Machine learning focuses on the development of computer programs that can teach themselves to grow and change when exposed to new data. The first example of machine learning was in the 1950s from a gentleman named Arthur Samuel who was able to teach a computer how to play a game of checkers. In the early stages of machine learning, games were the focus because there was an end result. There was a quantitative outcome that could be measured, whereas nowadays we see it applied to business and advertising and the true growth and potential of machine learning is being displayed. There are two types of machine learning, supervised and unsupervised. Supervised machine learning involves labeled data sets being supplied to the machine for it to learn from. Two types of supervised machine learning is regression and support vector machines, which we will discuss in this presentation. The other form of machine learning is unsupervised, where the variables that are given to the machine or to the computer program and algorithms are unknown or not labeled. And generally the machine is able to cluster or categorize this information. A good example of this is data mining. Support vector machine learning involves the input of training data or data sets into an algorithm and it finds the equal distance between, in this instance here, two classes. Of course, the only points that matter during support vector machine learning are the ones closest to the optimal hyperplane and support vector machines can actually go beyond a two-dimensional aspect of relating the different data sets that are applied. It can go to three and four dimensional data sets. Now how does this relate to demand forecasting and what are some examples? In 2001 a group of students entered into the EUnite competition where they were asked to find the forecast, the future forecast for the demand load in electricity the winning team used support vector machines but at that time they had a lot of issues using all the data that was supplied to them because it's so hard to determine things like temperature for future for the future because many times temperatures and weather are based on possibly up to at least two weeks but not beyond that it gets kind of squirrely once you go beyond a two-week period when it comes to temperature and and what the weather's going to do so during their competition, they actually had to use a time series model with support vector machine learning. They also were able to prove that there's a lot of demand, there's a lot of distortion that can come from supplying the wrong data set or labeled data sets to the machine. However, in 2008, there was a case study that involved the Canadian foundries and a simulated extended supply chain that showed that support vector machines perform really well when trying to demand or to forecast demand for companies. This case study in particular used all known forms or most of your traditional forms such as naive, time series, moving average and, compare, and compared it to neural networks which is a very tedious type of machine learning which is not covered in, in this presentation. Support vector machines actually performed really well but they were pretty comparable in 2008 to what you could get through a time series analysis. The, the mean average error was, was very closely related to what a traditional method of forecasting was at that time or, and we still use today, the company I work for still currently uses linear regression and time series analysis for, for finding forecasting. However, in 2009, a gentleman was able to create what could possibly be a big step towards support vector machines moving beyond those traditional forms of forecasting and it introduces a highly mathematical formula. It dem also demonstrates the advances in machine learning methods and where the artificial intelligence community is moving towards the advancements it's making and, and the fact that it's not going anywhere anytime soon. His actual hybrid support vector machine used what is called a swarm kernel 
which to a layman like myself didn't really mean much but it obviously creates a lot more accurate pinpoint exact demands and it was very very accurate in regard to the mean average error so there's some requirements when you're going to implement something such as machine learning or support vector machines in a company to work with demand forecasting obviously you need an acceptable cost to benefit ratio it, for a small company possibly support vector machine learning to forecast demand is not ideal or optimal from a initial investment and and that standpoint you also you will be required to have an educated workforce this can be difficult when you're competing for labor with larger companies and corporations that can afford to kind of outprice you in that market of finding you know optimal people to perform the task of demand forecasting for you using machine learning and also if you're not going to be able to to reach those highly skilled workers you're, you're going to need a user-friendly platform Microsoft has cr created Azure which probably to most programmers or people that are very good in technology it's, it's very simple program but for someone like myself it was still very complicated for a novice finding a user-friendly platform it will be key for this to be implemented across all companies the impact on demand forecasting with support vector machines can, can really improve things it can reduce the bullwhip effect and demand distortion this was proven during the uh, 2008 case study where they compared traditional forecasting methods with neural networks and su support vector machines being able to know exactly how much stock you need on hand and safety stock you need in place can help reduce lead times and stock outs it can also reduce costs associated with carrying inventory in, in the transportation where you don't have to make a next day air shipment because you've already got that material on hand because you, you've been able to forecast much more accurately because of because of support vector machines and ultimately this would lead to sustainability less carbon footprint if you have less trucks and using less transportation to move goods you're, you're going to have a better sustainable business model in place in conclusion support vector machine learning and its use in demand forecasting is an evolving field it holds great benefits to many companies especially those who are in a very competitive market where half a percent or two percent means a lot uh, to, to other marketplaces or other companies it, it might not hold a lot of benefits but to highly competitive businesses it, it absolutely can benefit them and, and reduce their inventory because compared to traditional methods it definitely outperforms those significant requirements for implementation are uh, an educated workforce and a very user-friendly platform and obviously machine learning is still being used today it's used by Facebook to run news feeds it's used by Google to power their Google car their uh, self-driving cars so obviously the longevity of support vector machines and machine learning is real because the, the first case study that I, that I was able to find was from 2001 and, and here we are in 2016 and we're still talking about the impact of machine learning and, and how it can affect demand forecasting I would like to thank everyone for your time and please feel free to post any questions or comments regarding this presentation again thank you